Hi and welcome to a new Milky Way photography video. As you know, we're in the peak of the Milky Way season. Now is the best time of year to capture a lot of images of the Milky Way. And I'm sharing a series of videos to help you out with your Milky Way photography. So this is a series of videos and uh, this is the second video of this series. This is gonna be a total of four videos. And the last one is gonna be a live webinar, a live stream this Sunday, 1 p.m. EST where I want to show you something that is gonna change your Milky Way photography forever. So don't miss that webinar because that's gonna be fun, informative, and we're gonna be sharing a lot of Milky Way photography. Now, refreshing a little bit about the first video. In the first video, we saw how to get more quality in your Milky Way images, especially reducing the noise. I show you two different ways to reduce the noise using the noise AI and the stacking. As we said, these methods are not perfect. We can reduce the noise, but the problem is that the dynamic range is gonna be much lower and we don't have any colors, any details, and the quality of Milky Way images isn't gonna be perfect. So if you want to capture the best possible images, we said that we have to use a start tracker. So in this video, I want to talk a bit more about tracking, explaining what is a start tracker, which are the pros and cons, what types of trackers you can find in the market, and finally, giving some uh, tips on how to use a tracker with the basic steps. So starting with uh, what is a tracker? A tracker is simply a device that we place between the tripod legs and our camera to compensate the rotation. As you know, we're living in a planet that is spinning at a very high speed on space. So the problem is that when we are capturing longer exposures at night, maybe anything above 10, 15, 20 seconds, you're gonna see the stars like trails. So using a tracker, you can compensate the earth rotation, your camera is gonna be moving at the same movement of the stars, and that way you can capture longer exposures. So that's the basic of tracking, capturing longer exposures all the Milky Way. Talking about the pros and cons of using a tracker, the main pro is simply that. We can capture longer exposures of the Milky Way, so forget about the 500 rule, the MPF rule, and all these rules that tell you all the limitations in your shutter speed. So if we're used to shooting for maybe 10, 15, 25, 30 seconds with a wide angle lens, and with a tracker, this limit is no longer valid. So with a tracker, you can capture images for one, two, three, even four minutes with no problem. The other pro about this is that you can use better settings. So for example, instead of using a wide aperture in your lens, you can close down your aperture one, two stops. So you probably heard this like a thousand times. When you shoot at night, you have to use the widest aperture in your lens. Well, that's true when you're not using a tracker, but when you use a tracker, you can narrow your aperture and this will allow you to capture a greater depth of field and also more details and better stars in the corners with less aberrations, less comma, and generally more quality. The other thing is you can lower your ISO. So again, forget about shooting with super high ISOs like 6400, 5000, and other high ISOs that increases the noise and also reduces the dynamic range. Now using a tracker, we can take an ISO, maybe like 800, 1600, and this will translate in images with more details, more colors, and generally like an overall feeling of more quality. The other pro about using a tracker is that it's very inexpensive. So if we compare especially with a lens, a good lens from Milky Way is gonna be minimum four to five hundred dollars. If you're going to go for a very good lens from Milky Way, it's gonna be maybe fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. So it's gonna be more expensive. Using a tracker, you can range anything from $200 to maybe $300 to $400. The most basic models are around $200 and this will allow you to capture longer exposures of the Milky Way for two or three minutes with no problem. So a tracker is gonna be much cheaper than using a lens. And the good thing is that using a tracker, you can use any of your current lenses, but maybe they are not very fast. Maybe you're using a f4, f5.6. And placing this lens in a tracker, this lens is going to transform into a super lens because you will allow to capture longer exposures, more light and more quality. So as I said, a tracker is not very expensive and it's gonna improve a lot your images. Talking about the cons of using a tracker, one of the main disadvantages that people remark is that you have to add more weight to your camera bag. And this is partially true, you have to add more weight. But let me tell you something, you don't have to add like a gigantic tracker in your camera bag. Nowadays they are in the market very light trackers, very portable that you can take very easily in your camera bag. So for example, using a tracker like the Mushup Move, one of these light trackers, as you see it fits in the palm of my hand. 
and it's super light, super portable. And actually, you compare this to a lens, this is gonna be lighter and it's gonna take less space than any lens. So this you can take even in your pocket and it's not gonna be very heavy. So you can carry it anywhere, whatever you like. And it's not like a really considerable extra weight in your camera bag. So yes, you have to add more weight to your camera bag, but to me, this is not really a cons because you usually carry more lenses. And with this, you can actually take maybe one lens and that's gonna be enough. The other cons is that you need to know how to use a tracker. And of course, there is a learning curve. You need to know how to operate your tracker. However, this is again, very simple and taking like a few steps and a little bit of practice, this is gonna be very easy. So in a few seconds, I'm gonna explain you the few basic steps for tracking and you'll see that it's not really difficult. So that's not really like a big cons. Talking now about the different types of trackers in the market, we have to differentiate for just a standard Milky Way photography about two different types of trackers. So the first are gonna be the light trackers, like the one I show you, the Moveship Move. And these trackers are gonna be very light, very portable, and designed specifically for wide angle. So you're using anything from 12, 40 millimeters up to 24 millimeters. These trackers are gonna be perfect. You can shoot any time from one to two, three minute exposures, and they're gonna work great. They're also easier to use. They're very straightforward. And these trackers are especially recommended if you are starting out. Now, the other types of trackers that we can find are the standard trackers. These are a bit bulkier and are more advanced. So with these trackers, you can use longer focal lengths. So we're not limited to the focal length and you can use something like 35, 50, 85 millimeters. We can capture more advanced Milky Way images, like for example, uh, trap panoramas, mosaics, and other things. So if you're already familiar with tracking and, or if you want to get the most advanced Milky Way images, these trackers are the best option. Technically, they are a bit more complex to use, but they are not super difficult, it's the same thing following like a series of steps. And this is the other option that we have. Now talking about how to use a start tracker, as I said, you have to follow like a series of steps. There are some basic steps. And the first thing we have to do is place a tripod in the ground and level a tripod. So leveling the tripod is gonna be crucial if you want to track, and if you don't level your tripod correctly, that tracking is not gonna work. So first of all, level your tripod. Secondly, place the tracker on top of the tripod. And after that, place your camera with your lens on top of the tracker. After this, we have to do the most crucial step when you are tracking and is the polar alignment. This sounds very complex, but it's a bit easy. Uh, when you're using a tracker, you have to align your tracker with the north or south celestial pole. That way, your tracker is gonna move at the same speed and movement as the stars. And if you're, for example, in the northern hemisphere, this is gonna be pretty simple. Taking, for example, the Big Dipper as a reference, you can take the two extreme stars in the Big Dipper, and if you draw like a straight line, you'll get to Polaris. Polaris is gonna be the reference in the Northern Hemisphere for aligning your tracker, and once you align your tracker with Polaris, either using a laser or a smaller scope, um, your tracker is gonna be aligned and you'll be able to capture those long exposures. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's gonna be a bit more difficult, but again, you can follow some references. So for example, following the cross, the Southern Cross, and the pointers, if you draw a line, the point where these lines cross, that's gonna be very close to the Southern uh, Celestial Pole. So you can make this process easier using, for example, a smartphone with an app. There are so many apps nowadays in the market where you can just point your mobile to the sky and they will tell you where is Polaris, where are the uh, Southern Celestial Pole, and now you'll be able to align your tracker. So once your tracker is aligned, the next step is to turn your tracker on and then just capture your exposure. This is gonna be maybe one, two, three minutes, whatever you need. And after this, you have to take your tracker off and capture another exposure for the foreground. As you can guess, when you are tracking, you are capturing a perfectly sharp sky because your camera is moving. But since your camera is moving, the foreground is gonna be blurry. So you have to capture another shot with the same composition for the foreground. So that's uh, another possible cons that you have to do. You have to do a blending in post-processing to blend both images together. This can be a cons, but again, doing blendings today with the current uh, software like Photoshop, there are so many automatic tools to do a blending and it's super easy. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do a blending step by step. It's a super simple, super easy, and you will see with a real track image, how you can capture a track image and do a blending in a very easy way. 
So if you're interested in tracking and in making the most of your Milky Way images, don't miss the next Sunday's live stream. We're gonna talk a lot about, about tracking, we're gonna show you everything more in depth, and we're gonna show you many things that are gonna change your Milky Way photography forever. So don't miss next Sunday, 1 p.m. EST is the live stream, and in the next video, as I said, I'm gonna show you everything about how to do a blending.